There are so many questions asked on a daily basis regarding the origin of planet Earth. Where did we come from? How did the planet form? How long have we been here? And how much longer do we have left? What we often fail to ask is the specific inquiries about Earth that will guide us to the answers for the big picture. Did Earth come the way it is now? Or was it slowly formed and built? by other objects in the universe? Or even more specifically, where did the water that covers over 70% of our planet come from, as its prevalence here doesn't really exist on any other planet or object under our direct supervision, stretching for hundreds of light years in all directions? While the answer for an exact origin point might never be readily available to us, we do have signs and symbols that guide us on our mission to solve the age-old question. And none might be more helpful to future studies than the Winchcomb meteorite, a recent discovery that might tell us more about our own planet's history than any other rock found across Earth's expansive surface. The evening of February 28, 2021, was quaint and calm in the skies hanging above Gloucestershire, England. The suburbs below were winding down for the night, with lights shutting off every few minutes or so between homes and street lamps. For all intents and purposes, it should have been a normal good night, but before the clock could chime at midnight, the streets below were anything but normal. At approximately 9.54 p.m., a breathtaking fireball entered the Earth's atmosphere, accompanied with a sonic boom heard by those still not tucked into bed. Over at the Natural History Museum in London, the UK Fireball Alliance had six camera systems pointed at the night sky, serendipitously ready for the moment everyone had been waiting for for years. It had been 20 years since the last meteorite was discovered in Great Britain, and now the conditions were perfect the streak to end. As over a thousand reports poured into local news stations and various government agencies across Northern Europe, one family in particular woke up the following morning to a surprise no one else could claim. Fragments of the meteorite sitting in the center of their driveway in Winchcombe, England. At first, the Wilcock family, namely Rob, his wife Catherine, and their daughter Hannah, were unsure of what exactly sat before them in front of their little home. It didn't take long, however, for the three of them to piece together the clues of the previous night's visual and auditory mysteries. After confirming a meteorite did indeed crash through Earth's atmosphere and make landfall somewhere in Northern Europe, the Wilcock family carefully and meticulously combed through every blade of grass next to the driveway to inspect for any lingering fragments. Of course, once the neighbors heard of the news and saw the Wilcox frantically searching about the suburbs, they too joined in on the hunt. Altogether, 319 grams of meteorite pieces were accounted for, and wrapped in a bag to be brought to London for further examination. As the meteorite underwent professional analysis, more and more fragments were popping up across Great Britain. Chris Casey, an experienced meteorite hunter himself, had been well aware of the meteoroid's presence in European airspace, and spent the following months looking for pieces to the Winchcombe phenomenon. On March 21st, Casey was successful, pulling out 12 grams of meteorite from a grassy patch in Woodman Cove. The good fortunes continued, with 42 grams found in Bishop's Cleave over the next few weeks, with the assistance of fellow hunters Luther Jackson and Graham Ensnor. Additionally, Farmland near Winchcombe was searched tirelessly until a massive chunk of the meteorite, weighing at a whopping 152 grams, was found in an empty field. Altogether, researchers in London acquired just over 600 grams of meteorite fragments, coming in triple-digit numbers. The hype surrounding the Winchcombe meteorite was so strong, a construction outfit arrived at the home of the Wilcock family and dug out a one-square-meter chunk of their driveway preserving the asphalt 
where the meteorite first made impact. After the driveway block was thoroughly examined, it was shipped away to the Natural History Museum, where the first recordings of the meteorite were captured. Once all of the known pieces were brought together and the fanfare of the investigation died down, researchers could finally dive into the real mission, unlock secrets of our planet using just a little rock from the universe. One of the first objectives by experts was to figure out where the meteorite came from and how old it was compared to the rest of the solar system. It didn't take long before they discovered the Winchcombe meteorite came from relatively nearby. They estimated this specific rock originated from the large asteroid belt that calls our solar system home, located in between Mars and Jupiter's orbits. In terms of age, the meteorite was estimated to be around 4.6 billion years old, dating back to the prehistoric period of our solar system's transformation and the era in which many of our planets were first formed. A major reason why researchers were able to analyze the meteorite fragments so efficiently was due to the care and quickness shown by those who recovered the pieces. Because the meteorite fragments were not impacted by any rainfall or other third-party material, and it reached a protected, secure place inside the 12-hour window of impacting Earth, it ended up in researchers' hands as perfect as a meteorite sample could be. In fact, the quality of the fragments were so authentic to the meteorite prior to impact, some have said the Winchcombe meteorite is the closest discovery one can make to literally extracting rock from asteroids by space probes in the actual asteroid belt. This type of pristine return for astronomers was critical in moving on to the next few pieces of the puzzle. What does this meteorite tell us about primitive asteroids and the early universe at large? The exact classification of the Winchcombe meteorite is chondritic, or more specifically, carbonaceous chondrite. These type of meteorites are thought to have been the material that was helping to form planets, and using the estimated age of the Winchcombe, its chemical makeup is right in line with that theory. The size of the original asteroid is impossible to discern with current technology, but it definitely isn't like most other space rocks that are tested by earthly experts. For example, many comets in space have been analyzed by NASA and other space agencies with the hopes to discover water away from Earth. And not just any old water, but specifically water with the same chemical makeup as the water found in our oceans. While these comets are often discovered to withhold water molecules within the rock and the ice constituting most of the object, the water molecules are not consistent with the chemistry of our oceans. These findings struggle to provide much supporting evidence to the claims that the Earth was formed by a multitude of asteroid impacts, as they would have left a much different water source behind. Not to mention, life as we know it might not even exist. That is, until the Winchcombe meteorite showed up. After the 300,000 year journey from the asteroid belt to Earth and a series of tests run by experts, it was found that the Winchcombe meteorite contains 12% water and 2% carbon, both very exciting data points. The water is especially intriguing as the chemical makeup of this water does match the water already found on Earth's oceans and not like the water found in comets. This water isn't pooled up in a liquid form, however. Rather, the water molecules in the Winchcomb are stuck inside minerals spread throughout the mud of the meteorite, locked and hidden away within the outer rocky surface. This revelation is why the timing of the meteorite's discovery is so vital. Most space rock that lands on Earth is not found for days, weeks, or even years. Normally, it sits in isolated pockets of the globe and is therefore contaminated with earthly material, such as rainwater. Once the water, mud, snow, or other contaminant touches the meteorite, it's next to impossible for researchers to clarify if the water on the meteorite is truly extraterrestrial or if it was simply absorbed in the contamination process. With a 12-hour recovery timeline, confirmed records of zero precipitation in Winchcombe, 
in an analysis of equal value to a space probe, it's fair to say this specific meteorite proves that water exists beyond just our atmosphere on Earth. Also stored away within the meteorite is the aforementioned carbon that makes up just a couple of percentage points. The carbon portion is important too, because it contains amino acids. In fact, a large chunk of the carbon is amino acids, which are the building blocks of DNA and other organic compounds essential to harboring life. If life was to spawn and flourish on Earth millions upon millions of years ago, a cascade of space rocks containing both water and amino acids would need to crash into the surface in mass. Of course, there are nearly an infinite number of other things that need to happen to create a stable environment for life to thrive. But as long as the big pieces are there, a chance exists. It's why experts are overjoyed with the discovery of the Winchcombe meteorite. Finally, there is proof that extraterrestrial water that matches our water exists, as well as support for the idea that our planet is here due to an explosion of asteroids and other planet-building materials 5 billion years ago, resulting in our solar system, our sustenance on Earth, and our living, breathing souls we are so fortunate to have. If there's a word or phrase that can best describe the Winchcombe meteorite and what it symbolizes in both astronomy and humanity, it's the famous words once uttered by the fictional Dr. Ian Malcolm. Life finds a way. <laughs>